Preview Sim, we are building a resin engine for the Mustang from Edward. Very nice little kit. I have to say it is very expensive. Here's the various bags, components, and instructions. And I've immediately moved away from the instructions. The very first thing we're going to do is modify the plastic parts. Just need to make some modifications to the fuselage and the lower wing. The reason I chose to do this was to enable me to test fit the engine mounting as I went through the build. Just showing you here basically highlighting the areas that need to be removed from the plastic. Just use some panel liner just to make sure I didn't make that mistake. Now here I use a variety of tools to remove the plastic. One very handy method is to use a plastic scriber to run repeatedly down the panel lines, just deepening them out. Then you can move either to a razor saw or another type of saw. I forgot what type they are. <laughs> Anyways, move the plastic parts, tie them up with the sandpaper on a file. On the lower wing, I found it easy to remove it actually with uh, just my screw cutters. Be very delicate with the, uh, with the removal of the plastic from the under wing. There's very small connection points left. Let's get on with the basic build now of the uh, Merlin engine. Gonna have to use a razor saw again to remove the very large pouring stubs. And here I'm trying to uh, use a motor tool here to try to uh, remove the flash from the ignition wires. And supercharger, got a very large pouring stub. Just showing you there that you don't always need to use a razor saw, you can use your sprue cutters to remove the larger blocks. And uh, now we're on with building it. Points to note, everything done in super glue. Super glue, not the friendliest medium to work with, as we all know. But uh, with resin parts, we've only got one or two options. It's either the super glue or we could use two part epoxy. Anyways, the construction of the basic block is pretty straightforward. There are some keyed sort of joints, and also as here on this crankcase cover, you just need to make sure you've got a very flat mating surface uh, to make sure that the parts are true when you join together. And there's many, many small little details that make this uh, a little model and a model, as I said. At this point now, I'm uh, gluing out the fuel rail just uh, prior to adding in some wiring details, the ignition wires for that V12. I'm using a very small gauge solder wire here. And the reason I pre-drilled the fuel rail is just, it's just a lot easier to set the wires into place rather than butt jointing them. If you join them into pre-drilled holes, you've got a much better chance of them gaining purchase and uh, sitting better within the model. Now we're just going on with the rest of the sort of construction. I believe this is the oil tank. And I pre-drilled some more holes and made them bigger just to help me out later on as I need to add more and more wiring as we move through the build. Now I recommend this stuff. This is lead wire. You can get it in various gauges. This is 0.5 millimeter and the instructions have many call outs for adding lots and lots of wiring throughout this model. Now, I'll be upfront and honest, I did not add all of the wiring. Basically, because of the way the engine's mounted within the engine support cradle, some of it you just can't see. So use your judgment. These are the PU parts, mainly linkages, very, very fine brass parts. Uh, again, uh, not not the easiest things to work with, but they do add that extra detail. Just adding on the manifolds, these manifolds are excellently detailed. They really are a nice highlight of this kit, all that undercut detail. You see just going back and forth, adding more details. And now we're on with the actual engine support frame. 
again as I said I moved this out of sequence up to you how you build it but I found it better to build up this frame test fit the engine then remove the engine and then actually check the, uh, the fit of the firewall with the engine support frame onto the plastic parts just to make sure everything's aligned this is to make sure that the engine is canted or misaligned when you actually come to the final fitment quite a few of the parts here you have to uh, remove sand and here as you can see these are paper thin details and I'm just trying to illustrate here just different ways of removing the flash from these resin parts mainly using a scalpel uh, cutting through little windows of the flash and then using the sprue cutters to separate the larger uh, resin trees as they were and once that window popped out it's a case of again cutting out again with the scalpel blade and then we can finally tidy up again with a the file these parts are flexible they won't snap on you unless you're particularly violent and these parts here are actually the engine howling and now we're just doing the air intake and this is a battery mount and we're going to note this is for the later mustangs not for your european theater ones you'll see that the mustangs for the european theater that battery is mounted behind the pilot on the fuel tank well, here's all the basic parts all ready for primer using mr service of black primer sit back relax this is where things are quite nice and easy just explain just here that i'm using a primer from uh well in this case mr surfacer because we've got multimedia components first of all this isn't plastic it's resin and resin the adherence of acrylics isn't too great to it so using a lacquer based primer does help you somewhat and using this black color of course we've got many shadow areas and depth so uh, we sort of uh, solve two problems in one go i also decided to paint some of the engine covers as well just in uh, preparation for the main build portion which will be the next video and now we're going to this uh, i used xf4 from tamia which is to represent this zinc chromate primer that is on some of the engine bay components particularly the firewall and the main engine bearers and also the inner portion of the uh, the engine cowlings as well quite a sickly looking color and the engine although it was black you could probably get away with it i decided to paint this with uh, nato black which is basically a very very dark gray the idea being to add a little bit of that sort of grime and wear type effect and final parts to get base coated are in metallics i used vallejo acrylic metallics in this instance and the reason i chose that really is because it's a little bit more resistant to weathering if you use the owl clouds etc and you're going to see as we go into it with the weathering i'm not exactly shy with it so using a metallic color that's resistant to enamel type washes uh, was my preference here just used a bit of the sort of soft putty type mask here just to delineate that area and now a bit of detail painting not too much this was the most detailed part these are the rubber flexible mounts for the engine plumbing and uh, i suppose the easiest way to do this was just hand painting it so I found out it didn't take too long to do. And of course, just sit back, have a coffee, play some music, and enjoy yourself. And I'll point out as well, I didn't actually paint the battery black, but I should have. I left it uh, in that sickly green color, but I did paint the wiring for the batteries. And that's my attempt to add a little bit of weathering to the uh, very, very front portion of 
the uh, fuselage. Bit more. This was the way that I painted the metallic parts of the engine bearers, hand painted them. And also there's a little bit of hand painting on silver of the manifold mounts. And it's sort of dry brushed against the ignition ignition wiring. I'll just sort of point out using this uh, Vallejo acrylic, uh, it took a two coats really to get a good coverage. So you're seeing here the, the first application, that's why it's not very uh, uh, opaque. And then uh, for the actual exhaust stubs, moved over to this burnt iron color, which is uh, quite attractive. And at this point here, I'm adding the second coat of silver just to give this uh, these metallic parts a bit more depth to them. I'll just say that pointing, uh, painting the frame with the acrylics I thought was quite a good idea. And just uh, adding on a little bit of detail paint using silver grey in preference to silver not to make it massively stick out. The idea here is just to add the idea that there's some chipped uh, paint to the maintenance areas like the bolts etc that might be uh, touched by tools and finally we're doing the assembly after all that detail painting we can start the main assembly so the sequence was to put the engine within its mount and uh, I have to say that the uh, connection points are very small as well so just make sure it's properly set and this was a little bit tricky it was uh, running the plumbing into the uh, into the engine there is some definite attachment points which make it not too difficult and also it's worth pointing out as well some of that I mean is pretty deep and hidden uh, when it when you as you'll see when it comes to the the final assembly now this uh, this part I did have some issues with and this is the air intake here and the very front portion of the airframe structure. These are the final bits of wiring that go in. These had to go in after the assembly. I use some of the thicker lead wire here. Just to detail up those parts as per the instructions. And there is our completed Merlin engine. Nice little package. So let's get weathering and weathering very, very straightforward using enamels from Mr. Color. I mix together as typically as you'll see in most of my videos. I use brown and a touch of black just to uh, darken it up. And a liner brush and I gave the entire engine an overall wash using this solution. The idea here is that we're going to be depicting an operational aircraft. So, uh, a long range Mustang will have seen many many flight hours let's give it that grimy used look and of course as well we're popping the details out as we add this wash straightforward procedure nothing really to it and finally just to pop back the metallics get the cotton swab or q-tip depending on where you're from and just remove the excess wash from the areas you wish and really that is basically the weathering i went back with a metallic pencil just to add a few more highlights just here and there just give it that little extra detail touch you can go back on the metallics and just add those little glints of uh, interest on the engine itself and there we are, complete. So of course the next video we're gonna be working on the actual aircraft and finishing off this build. Remember to join me on Patreon where we've got a growing community and see you guys real soon.